So we got a fancy apartment uh, next to the marina. Next to the marina. <laughs> in, um, where are we? Packwood. Packwood. Nita came to visit me in Packwood. Because she's lovely. And she borrowed a friend's car, which is very sweet, a friend she's known for four days. <laughs> That's how lovely she is. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Jill. You're awesome. And, uh, yeah. Really basic, but uh, we're gonna stay for two days. Two nights. Two nights, and then uh, you're just gonna put me back on the trail and um, go back to her whooping. Yeah. And I'll do more video from the trail, and she, she should do more video from the, the farm. I've been trying to, but I'm so busy. Ah, yeah, she's very busy. All right, see ya. There's an elk outside a motel. Hello, Elkie. some ice cream. Saying hi to the elk. Hello. Okay, we're still in Packwood and we just started some Thai from that truck I just filmed. But also there's a more crazy uh, deer. Yeah, elk. elk. Elk action. There's one there. There's one there. They're everywhere. Hey, sorry about the sun, hopefully it's not too bad, but um, just thought I'd say hi. I need to drop me off a while back. And we had a lovely two nights in Packwood, and I really needed that. My body was getting blisters from mosquito bites and abrasion on my shoulders from the pack, and I took her hip belt off her pack. So the, the broken hip belt that I have is being, they're sending a new one out, but it wouldn't have made it on time. So, um, to anyway useful. So I just got them to send it down to where Anita is staying. And this is the trail that I'm walking along. I've got four days to the next resupply at Snoqualmie where I've sent a box. And then I think there's about maybe 16 days in total of hiking left and then I will meet Anita either at uh, I can't remember the name of the pass but Hearts Pass she'll meet me at Hearts Pass and we'll walk the last four days together there and back to the border where the trail finishes or if I'm there running really early and she messages me that she doesn't want to do that I'll just walk the days there and back and uh, meet her at Hearts Pass still, just like two days later instead of four days, because that'll be my pace versus Anita's. And then we'll be done, we'll be finished, and we'll go into Seattle and get a bus to Vancouver and work out when to fly home. So just um, walking for a while now today. Anita dropped me off this morning. I'm just coming up to Sheep Lake. Looks very pretty. This is my last water for um, I think 12 kilometers today. And probably camp at the next spot as well. But um, very nice. Tempted to swim, but I'm all clean. Hey! <laughs> well, I think this is the closest I'm going to get to Rainier. So I thought I should uh, do a little bit of footage. That's it there. So I'm kind of deep into a burn area now. Can't really avoid um, burn areas these days. It seems to happen along the PCT throughout the year, especially in the summer where um, I think today is 32 Celsius and then it's going to be 36 and 38 over the next couple of days. So uh, that's what happens. It's just very much like Australia. Um, and, you know, usually it's some uh, campfire that's gotten out of hand or a cigarette butt or something that causes it. Which is what I heard uh, this one was caused by. But I'm hoping to hike to about 30 k's this afternoon. I didn't start until just after lunch because uh, I was with Anita in Packwood, which is lovely. Uh, so she dropped me off at the 
trail again and I still hope to get 30 done because I'll just walk until dark and at that point there's more water so that's my next water I have seen a couple of little um you know tiny streams across the trail like tiny tiny you could probably collect a liter in a couple of minutes if you arrange some leaves as a sort of a funnel so uh, that gives me hope that there's more water out here than than expected i don't know where it's coming from because there's been no rain and um, it doesn't look like there's any snow melt above me and from what i heard from a southbounder that i just chatted to for a while he uh, was saying that basically there's nothing no snow to worry about from now on which makes sense i've only got two weeks left and i've just come from kind of the mount rainier area which is i think one of the highest spots left i haven't researched that i could be <laughs> could be full of it but uh i do go up to a couple of passes where there are ski resorts snoqualmie is my next resupply box in three or four days and um that's a ski resort i believe so you know there might still be some snow but i don't think it's a it's a threat to my safety at all uh that last part on the last video was uh was like i said the most exciting <laughs> part of the pct i've done but i haven't used micro spikes or an axe the whole trip so um i think starting basically the first of april having a few weeks off here and there it's uh it's so hot now that i just i think you'd have to start maybe going southbound to get some snow that was uh was dangerous i don't know uh, like you know last month maybe if you were going southbound but yeah so i'll uh, keep plodding away i've got about 10 kilometers to go before my hopeful water and campsite for the night and that'll be about 30 k's and then I'll uh, show you more from there. Oh, still pretty crazy uh, forest that's burnt. It's uh, pretty close to sunset. And that's the whole what I've been in, what I've been walking in. There's the sun just there. So I'm hoping I'm close to dinner slash camping slash water. Hopefully, uh, I think it should only be 500 meters away. I don't know if there's camping there, there's definitely water there. But I'll try and find a campsite as close as I can to it because I have done enough for the day. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> this was my spot last night. So I've uh, packed up already, obviously. Got some water on my little peak screen. And now I'm heading eight kilometers to the next water. I'm still in this burnt out area. But um, there's enough ground cover to make it pretty, and even though there's no shade, I had a good sleep last night. Um, I think the sun woke me up at about 7 a.m. and it sort of came over the crest of the hill. None of the trees, the dead trees around me fell on me, so it's <laughs> good. So today is still pretty barren. It's a really good representation of today. Uh, lots of dead trees around. So that's my water source down there, but I was just told that at this cabin there might be some trail magic. And it's a beautiful meadow. So I'm guessing it's a ranger station or something, and there must be some roads to it. Because um I feel like I'm in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> but I'm clearly not. So that's the cabin, and I'm gonna go and see if there's trail magic. And that's the meadow. Sorry about the sun glaring you. I'll start from here, hello. <laughs> uh, so there was trail magic at that um, Ulrich cabin, I think it was called. <clears throat> lovely cabin on a beautiful meadow. And some lovely people left a big cooler full of um, empty beer cans. <laughs> I'm sure they were full when they left it. 
I don't want beer anyway, but uh, I got a protein bar and a packet of Frito chips, which is amazing. <sighs> Lovely day <laughs> to get some extra calories that you weren't expecting. So um, that was really nice. What was strange was that it's a Sunday and um, I'll show you the trail. Just walking through the cabin and out the other side, there was basically like a car park that was sort of four-wheel drive access only and and a couple with a giant Jeep all set up and then two guys on dirt bikes. <laughs> it's always strange to come out to a spot when you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere. And it probably essentially is in the middle of nowhere. They've just made a lot of effort to get there in, you know, off-road vehicles. But yeah, just to see people lounging around and <laughs> camp chairs and, you know, big esky type cooler things and they had a big gas propane tank to fuel their, <laughs> their stove I guess. Yeah it's always a bit strange but um, lovely to get some trail magic so thank you to whoever left the trail magic there. I think I'm around the 5th, 6th of August something like that on a weekend so thank you very much <laughs> really appreciate it. Hey little guy. Yeah, we have toads. Oh yeah. We have cane toads, which are horrible. Hello, everyone wave. Wave. So this is my uh, all of my I think 99 subscribers back home. <laughs> Tampon gives a wave there. There you go. I've zoomed in. Beautiful. Just been swimming at this uh, beautiful lake with these lovely people. But uh, I'm gonna keep hiking. So Okay, same thing. Everyone in there. I can't see it, so we're just, it's got a much better camera this way. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's lots of these cute little flowers. It's a very pretty section of trail. Pretty much all of Washington's been really pretty. Uh, very, I guess, dense and lush green trail. Sorry, I'll film this way so you don't have the sun in your face. Uh, the last video. A little quick one of me at the lake with those people. I don't know if you saw the lake in the background, but yeah, I just um, bumped into some really lovely people for the last day and been hiking with them and chatting. They're all more in my sort of age group. So um, actually all teachers, which is interesting. <laughs> they just met each other on trail as well. There's basically two, two groups of two. So uh, the four that, yeah, I just videoed. Really lovely, and I toyed with camping with them tonight, but I wanted to... They're staying in town tomorrow night anyway, which I'm not doing. So even if I stayed with them tonight, <clears throat> I just would have got tonight with them, and I'm going to try and get into Snoqualmie and pick up my resupply box pretty much first thing in the morning. Maybe if I need to recharge my power bank... I'll stick around to lunchtime, and in which case, if hopefully if they arrive by lunchtime, uh, I might have lunch with them. But otherwise, they're staying that night, so I would have uh, never saw them again after <laughs> tomorrow lunchtime regardless. So um, I wanted to get a few more miles done, I think, at the moment. Where they are is eight miles from Snoqualmie, which is like 12 kilometers. I wanted to get to the pretty much the closest campsite and water source before Snoqualmie, which I believe is about three kilometers away from Snoqualmie, so uh, nine kilometers from where I just was at the lake. So I'll get that done tonight and then do another hero, <laughs> which is the term for not stopping in town, just getting your resupply and recharging your battery and getting out as soon as that's done, uh, which I'm trying to do so that I can get pretty much the whole hike done before my birthday because Anita really wants to spend my 50th birthday, which is on the 22nd of August uh, in about 14 or 15 days, I think. So, um, I really need to keep up the average of at least 35 kilometers a day. 
and with those guys walking with them all day in about the same time it would have taken me to do 35 we did about 20 so <laughs> they're, they're a lot more relaxed uh, which is nice and you know they're two self-contained groups so they don't need to you know they're not rushing for anything they're just enjoying the experience which um i would be doing as well if anita were here but um now that we've set a bit of a i guess a deadline for me to get to um hearts pass uh, either to meet anita and she's going to do the last four days of hiking with me um, back to the, or basically to the end of the PCT, to the monument and back. Or I'll just walk to the monument and back by myself and meet her there on or before the 22nd. Because it's, uh, if she rents a car and drives in from Seattle, the car's just going to sit there for five days and that would be about $500, uh, probably more. And for the car just to be sitting there, just so that we could kind of do a little bit of a a hike back to the, uh, the, f uh, the finish of the trail and back. So we'll work it out. Uh, she's basically, I just left her to decide if she wants to do that section of the hike or not. I don't know anything about it. I don't know if there's any exposure or scary bits, which she really doesn't like. So I've left her to research that because only she can decide. And then, uh, yeah, she'll let me know. If she doesn't want to go to the end and back, I'll do it in probably three days. If she does want to, we'll probably do it in five together. Um, yeah, I think it's 50 kilometers from the last road crossing to the border and then another 50 kilometers back. So anyway, uh, I'll probably do a bit more filming from the campsite. I may edit this down because I do tend to babble. <laughs> but I um, just thought you'd like to see some of the trail. It's very beautiful, dense, uh, yeah, just really lush, green, verdant forest and lots of up and downs, but nothing crazy severe. Some quite steep little pinches up and down, but not to really high altitudes. So, um, but tomorrow going into Snoqualmie, it is a ski resort. So I'm imagining there's going to be a lot of uphill at some point <laughs> tomorrow morning, early, but that's all right. Good morning. It's about 7.30 and I am three kilometers from Snoqualmie where I get my resupply. And it was, there was a thunderstorm last night. It didn't rain a lot, but uh, lots of lightning and thunder, I guess, rolling over the mountain close to where I was, but I didn't really get very wet. Uh, so I'll go into Snoqualmie this morning and have some breakfast and pick up my resupply box. Recharge my battery and then uh, leave, I guess, around lunchtime and start hiking towards my next resupply, which is at Leavenworth in three or four days. <laughs> 